Good morning and good afternoon. I'm Vera from Solar B. Thank you for joining us today and welcome to this webinar on African solar installation and trends. At the end of last month, we held a webinar on high efficiency solar cells with five industry experts, including Dr. Martin Green from the University of New South Wales. We received lots of positive feedback from our audience and many wondered if we could hold webinars on market trends. And that's why we've decided to start this global PV market webinar series. And for the first stop of this webinar, we have chosen Africa. Africa is the sunniest continent on the planet and its huge potential for solar PV development is waiting to be unleashed. Today, we have invited Mr. Daniel Pasker, JA Solar's sales manager of Southern Africa and Mr. Gilberto Aquila Castillo, the senior business De development manager of TCSA to speak about the technological trends in Africa's solar PV market and the strategic policies on renewable energy transition in Africa. After their presentations, there will be a Q&A session where our guest speakers will answer questions from the audience. So please leave your comments and questions in the chat area. We will collect the questions and ask the speakers during the Q&A session. Well, first of all, I'd like to welcome Ms. He Yanli, the founder and president of Solar B, to give us an opening speech. Ms. Li founded Solar B in 2005, and the website has now grown to become one of the most viewed PV websites in China. All right, let's give her a warm welcome to give us the opening address. Ms. Li, please. Good morning and good afternoon. I'm He Yan. I'm the founder and president of Solar B, which is one of the most viewed solar PV websites in China. First of all, I'd like to thank the speakers and the audience for taking your precious time to join this event. Thank you very much. For this webinar, we are glad to have invited Mr. Daniel Pasek, GA Solar's sales manager of Southern Africa, and Mr. Jill Botter, senior business development manager from TCSA, both experts in the African market. This webinar is a first world global PV market series to discuss policies and market trends in different parts of the world. We were chosen Africa as our first stop because we believe in the continent's unlimited potential for solar PV development. The population in Africa has surpassed 1.3 billion, but only half of them have access to electricity. Since there are wars in rural areas, where only 30%, 35% of the people have electricity. The energy consumption per capita in Africa is among the lowest in the world, but the demand is huge. Therefore, investment in the power sector must be increased to meet electricity demand of African people. Among other options, Solar PV provides a great solution for the continent's electricity problems. The decreasing prices, the flexibility of solar PV and rich solar energy on the continent all provide favorable conditions for Africa to develop solar PV, both grid connected and off grid. However, the abundant solar energy resources have not been fully utilized on the continent. According to InterSolar's report, by the end of 2019, the total installed capacity of solar PV in Africa was 6.6 .6 gigawatts, accounting for only a little over 1% of the global installed capacity of 627 gigawatts. The local governments, however, have begun to see electrification and renewable energy development as their primary concern. InterSolar estimates that if Africa accelerates its solar PV deployments in the coming years, the total installed capacity could reach 70 gigawatt by 20, 2030, unleashing massive potential. This year, China Africa cooperates in solar PV has ushered in unprecedented opportunities. During the forum on China's African cooperation, the two sides signed a declaration on climate change partnership and pledged to broaden cooperation in clean energy like solar PV. Dozens of Chinese enterprises, 
have built solar PV power stations in NAFIC with a community installed capacity of more than 1.5 gigawatt, effectively alleviating local power shortage while reducing carbon emission. As an active player in solar PV industry, we cooperate with local industry associations institutions and major distributors to help enterprises better implement market development strategies, introduce advanced products, technologies, and solutions to local market so that project developers can improve their revenue. And through this webinar, we have to unveil the mysteries of the market so that we can all have a better understanding of the African market. In the end, I'd like Thank you again for joining us today. As Christmas is just around the corner, I'd like to wish you all a nearly Merry Christmas. Thank you, thank you again. Thank you, Ms. Lee, for opening the event and giving us an idea about the African solar market. Thank you very much. Yes. Okay, now I'd like to welcome Mr. Daniel Pascal to talk about the technological trends in African solar markets. Mr. Daniel Pasker is the sales manager of Southern Africa from JA Solar. He has extensive business development, accounts and sales management background with seven plus years of experience in the renewable energy sector in Southern Africa. He has profound understanding of the technological trends and market trends in Africa. Welcome Mr. Pasker. It's great to see you and thanks for joining our event. Hi, Vera. Thank you very much for, for <laughs> giving me the opportunity to speak today. It's a pleasure. Uh, let me just share my screen and then I can jump right in. Sure. Can you see my screen? Uh, not, not at the moment. Have you? And now? Yeah, I see now. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. 100%. Great. So first of all, let me just give a quick introduction to JA Solar. Um, we are a tier one solar PV module manufacturer operating out of China. Um, we have multiple factories, you know, throughout the world, which we produce our modules. Um, we were founded in May 2005. So we've had about 16 years in the uh, module manufacturing practice so far in the industry. Um, at currently, um, we've got about 11% global market share with about 3.7 billion um, US dollars of revenue as of 2020. Um, and as you can see so far, we have a cumulative shipments of about 63 gigawatts as of end of 2020. So that number should have significantly increased you know, towards the end of 2021. We also have about 33,000 customers worldwide with about a staff um, representative of about 25,000 employees. If you have a look at some of the technology innovations that JSOL has adapted over the years, um, we were one of the first people to have a PERC um, patent technology. Um, one of the first suppliers to have PID resistant modules. Um, we obviously are one of the first companies to, to implement double printing standards in, in mass production, as well as one of the first companies to use um, gallium doping for our wafers to increase efficiency in the market. Here you can see some of the, the capacities of, of our production. Um, obviously, we have a 30 gigawatt wafer capacity, 30 gigawatt cell capacity, and a 40 gigawatt um, module capacity. That actually has increased to about 46 with the introduction of a new six gigawatt production plant that we've, we've recently opened. And as, as of the end of 2021, we have over one gigawatt of solar implemented throughout Africa, uh, throughout the African continent. Now, if you have a look at cumulative global um, installed capacity, you know, worldwide, you can see that Middle East and Africa contributes to a very small percentage of, you know, global shipments as, as of, you know, how it stands today. The reality being that only about 6% of global shipments um, goes to, to Africa. Um, compared to the rest of the world, it is a, a tiny number at the moment, but the thing is demand is massively high for the African continent. We're expecting, you know, um, capacity to, to essentially double within the next few years easily through, through the African market. The thing is, there's a lot of energy, you know, security issues, there's a lot of energy, um, you know, supply issues throughout Africa that, that is really driving the demand behind it. And the more 
countries that are getting on board with, you know, um, government run tenders and reef programs, for example, the, the better. It'll definitely help push the, the demand through Africa and, you know, really increase the, the supply of, of modules throughout the continent. If you have a look here, um, we can see how the, the, the market is essentially split compared to utility scale, CNI and residential. Um, utility scale still takes majority of, of the um, capacity with about 60% on average and 20% to CNI and residential takes about 10%. Um, so this is where we come into the next section is um, why you know, the, the trends of, of, of modules throughout Africa at the moment. So the main goal essentially is to increase the modules power class uh, while increasing capacity, all while trying to um, lower the levelized cost of electricity. Um, this can be done in various ways, obviously increasing the efficiency of the cells output. Um, so a lot of companies have phased out polycrystalline modules or polycrystalline cells, sorry, and have implemented only uh, monocrystalline cells. There you can see we've already increased um, uh, efficiency from 17% to 23% over the last 11 years. Um, next was to you know, change technologies. So PERC technology is the main technology we use now in cell efficiency. Um, which is also boost efficiency quite high. Um, there's also various other, you know, module encapsulation enhancements such as um, anti-reflective coating, which is a standard, um, you know, half cell, uh, half cut cell technology, multi buzz bars, that sort of thing. Um, and the final thing is increasing the, the wafer cell size. So, you know, as a standard, there, there's um, 156 millimeter, 166 millimeter, um, and 182 millimeter. Now, most of the tier one manufacturers have all standardized on 182 millimeter cells moving forward. Um, this way it allows us to achieve, you know, much higher efficiencies with larger power classes than what we could do in the previous years. Now, as you can see here, um, here's some of the technologies that JSO Solar offers. And in terms of, you know, cell size and as efficiency grows. Um, we have our standard 158 millimeter cell, our 166 millimeter cell, and, and as I discussed, the 182 millimeter cell. Um, if you have a look at the efficiency from 158 to 182, you can see a quite a high efficiency, but I mean, the cell size does increase quite drastically to 29%. Um, as, as I was saying, the industry standard at the moment seems to be more a, uh, aimed at the 182 millimeter cell. Um, and we believe the sweet spot is still between 500 and, you know, 550 watt peak for, for larger cell modules. Um, here's just some of uh, a basic roadmap of where JS Solar has gone in the, the last few years and where we are going. Um, so obviously we've, we've introduced our deep blue module range um, in 2020. Um, where the power module essentially was about a maximum of 153, uh, sorry, 135 watt peak. Um, as of 2020, that'll be towards the 145, 150 uh, watt mark. So it has grown substantially over the last say, year and a half, two years. Um, another technology implementation which we're piloting at the moment is N-type module base, um, which is a new cell technology, which we're quite excited to, to launch. But obviously there'll, there'll be more information when that is, um, you know, arrived at a later stage. So one of the, the main technological trends obviously is, is like I said, um, cell efficiency. Um, we've moved away from standard solar cell modules towards um, PERC technology. So here's just a basic layout of, of standard solar cell um, breakdown versus PERC solar technology. So it is much more efficient in terms of, of irradiation absorption um, there is a better anti-reflective coating, um, and as I, as I explained, there is a gallium doping technology that increases efficiency on, on PERC technology. Now, due to the larger modules being, you know, a trend in the industry, there's, there's a lot of benefits that we've seen, you know, utilizing larger modules for, for plants and CNI projects in, in um, well, globally. So obviously there's less um, equipment needed, less labor, 
Um, you can have more modules per string, um, less strings in total, obviously. So insulation costs are, are driven quite low. Um, the larger cells are better suited for AP, um, 1P sorry, trackers. Um, logistics, obviously, the, the cost does drop as you can fit more containers and you know, a larger kilowatt peak rating per 40 foot container than you could on the smaller modules. Um, better utilization of space, you can obviously fit much larger array on, on you know, a square meters area than you could on smaller modules. Um, there's less maintenance, obviously quicker installations, you need a smaller team. Um, the, the only downside I would say is obviously larger modules are quite difficult to, to um, transport and carry in terms of getting them on site and on the roof, for example. So two men, for example, or three men are needed to carry the larger 550 watt or 600 watt modules. Um, so as you can see here, I, I did say that, you know, 500 to 550 watt is, is essentially the, the sweet spot in terms of solar technology at the moment. Um, there is larger modules in the industry. Um, J Solar has, for example, produced an 800 watt module just to say we can do it. Um, but, you know, the larger the power module doesn't necessarily mean the, you know, the better the plant or the, the lower the savings. Um, 550 or 500 watt is still the sweet spot in terms of, you know, levelized cost of electricity and reducing it. Um, having larger modules does come with, you know, mechanical load risks. Um, it makes it very difficult to install a 600 watt module, for example. Um, and structural capacity. A, a lot of mounting system suppliers, for example, or um, inverter suppliers weren't, or were, were sort of falling behind in terms of keeping up with the larger 600 or 650 watt um, power classes. Um, here's a very good indication of, of where the market is, is going. You can see um, the Deep Blue 3 range is, is essentially our 500 and you know, 40 watt module. We've grown it from 12.2 um, gigawatt capacity in 2020 to 30% in, in 2021. Compared to the other module classes, you can see it's, it's definitely a mainstream technology at the moment, and it's very, you know, in high demand. Um, here's a little bit more information on regards to the, the, you know, the gallium doping wafers, the high efficiency wafers. Um, so obviously, as a standard, there's about a 2% degradation in the first year. Um, followed about by a 0.5%, um, sorry, 0.55% degradation per year thereafter from year two to 25. So it's, it's quite a standard in the industry for the 182 um, millimeter cells. Um, obviously, J Solar is, is um, you know, uh, quite, quite stringent on being, you know, green and having uh, sustainability approaches in our in our production so that's why we have various green you know um, accreditations to our products um, because I mean obviously we can't be a renewable energy company that's not focused on sustainability and, and green technologies here's a couple of um, you know just images of some plants in Africa we have one of the first cement factories um, fully uh, of our modules. There's a couple of other larger plants throughout Africa as well. Um, and here's just some of our larger, you know, case studies over the past few years. We've got a 255 uh, megawatt ground mount in Brazil, 100 megawatt uh, plant. We have a hundred, sorry, an 80 megawatt plant in the US and a 10 megawatt plant in, in Egypt. Perfect. And that's the end of my presentation. So I'll be happy to, to answer any questions in the Q&A. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pasker, for your amazing presentation. Uh, it has really helped us understand the technological trends in the African market and JA Solar's business in Africa. Thank you. Pleasure. Okay, now I'm sure you're interested to hear something about the policies on renewable energy transition in Africa. So now let's welcome Mr. Castile to give us a presentation on that topic. Mr. Castile is the Senior Business Development Manager of Thousand Cities Strategic Algorithms, or TCSA. He has sufficient experience in monitoring African markets and has close ties with 
top diplomats of African embassies. Mr. Castillo, it's great to see you here. And yeah, you. good to see you too, Vera. <laughs> okay, now the floor is yours. All right, so uh, let me share my screen and uh, let me go to my presentation. I just... Okay, so... Can you see my screen right now? Yeah, I can see it now. Okay, good. Right. Well, I just have to write a little bit about more about the, the policies and uh, the strategy policy of renewable energy in Africa, which is a resource that the, our African governments and leaders need to take action. So let me go through the, the, directly to the introduction. First of all, we have like for the, for the first, first part is just introduction. The second one is uh, uh, renewable energy and trends. Uh, the third part is uh, the need, of, need for the energy transition. And the fourth part is uh, the, the strategies and key actions that African governments need to take takes in terms of um, <clears throat> energy. Let me go to the first or the, 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 the introduction. Yeah, so over the coming decades, the countries on the African continents have the opportunity to address two fundamental energy challenges, which is to achieve universal access to affordable and reliable sustainable and modern energy service by 2030 as set out in the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal 7. Thereby improving the life of hundreds of millions of the citizens. The technical and commercial, the commercial solutions required to provide universal access to reliable and affordable electricity from sustainable power system across Africa area at hand. Country snap shops, provide insights into the prospect for energy transition in terrain selected African countries along with a detailed deep dives into the transformation poten potential in five of these countries. So uh, when it comes to renewable energy trends, in the renewable uh, energy trends we have, uh, we need to, when, when it comes to renewable energy trends in Africa, we need to address some issues, which is the issues that I'm going to mention right now. And uh, I believe that this is uh, the things that can help us make, um, make, it, make Africa be more efficient, have, make Africa have more uh, renewable energy and uh, clean energy for all of our citizens. Renewable energy address the needs and contribute to, to improve living standards of the rural poor. Renewable energy is in line with the strategic with strategic plan of the ADB, ADB for infrastructure that consider renewable energy as one of the pillars of the sustainable development. Renewable energy is an untapped natural resource in Africa. Renewable energy is suitable the rural areas and also renewable energy is environmentally friendly. Renewable energy is compared and affordable to other fossil fuel resources. Develop renewable energy and integrate renewable power into grid, promote cross-border trade and renewable power build. Build on grid and initiatives. So when it comes to Africa energy, when it comes to Africa energy, we have um, seven affordable energies. Uh, we have a seven affordable clean energies in Africa. Universal access to affordable, reliable, and modern energy services. 
increase the share of renewable energy in the energy mix, improvement and energy efficiency. So we have also the impact dimensions of energy, energy as a enabler for sustainable development. We have the technology, education, we have also the health, and we have a communication employment environment. In the telecommunication, in the technology part, we have access to new technologies. In the education, we have learning lighting. In the health, we, don't, we have a new health technology, clean cooking, and in the communication, we have a new communication tools, new business, new business creating employment opportunities when it comes to employment. In the environment, we have self-guarding and biodiversity and the environment. What is sustainable development? When we are referring about uh, energy in Africa, we are talking about the needs of the present without compromising to the ability of generation to meet their own needs. As we can see, we have Africa is endowed with a lot of uh, significant renewable energies in all forms, right? So this is, we can see the map of Africa. I have divided map of Africa for, for three parts, three to four parts. Uh, in the map, we can see uh, the blue part, which is um, Eastern African Power Pool. We have also the yellow part, which is the Southern African Power Pool. And also we have the white part who represent the cleanest energies that we have in Africa, which is the Africa Clean Energy Corridors. So from the map, as we can see, just these three, these four, these four pieces that I have uh, breakdown for the energies in Africa, those are the part, those are the those are the energies that we are having, and the cleanest energy are in the white white part of the Africa. So the clean energy in this in this aspect is. Uh, in an Africa Clean Energy Corridor, which has the white parts for the, for, the, for the Africa map. We have different resources uh, of energy in Africa, as biomass, solar, wind, geothermal, hydropower, and et cetera. So uh, this diversification for our resources satisfies the rising demand, replace the poor, the poor quality supply net networks with reliable and safe energy supply. Now we just need to address the issue of the, the need of, of energy and transition. The need for energy transition in Africa as follow. We need address the need of significant public and private investment in expanding and modernizing transmission and distribution infrastructure as well as many and of great solutions are required to drive access expansions and economic growth, enable the integration of more reliable energy, reduce loss and ensure financial sustain sustainability in the sector, strengthening regulatory env environments and institutions and making electricity tariff cost effective to enable the power suppliers energy service providers and grid operators to meet their financial commitments to producers while maintaining and expanding their bids and demands. We also have to build, we, are, we also have to build the, 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 the necessary human capacity and skills within Africa. Countries will enable them to undertake energy transitions of their own terms while also boosting economic growth and job creations on the continent. A series of policies, interventions will be enabled and transition in which no one is left behind. A just and inclusive transition require a global company among countries, adequate resources mobilization and, and measures tailored to challenge various con countries face, including lesson learned learn from international experience. In innovative technology business models, regulatory frameworks and power system operation. Striving to utilize COVID-19 recovery effort in manner which links short-term recovery. To medium and long-term strategies in paramount in achieving 
the SDGs as a Paris Agreement target. Now we have uh, the enabled technologies, business models, market design, and system operations for us to use to make us all of the tools that we need necessary to make the African energy to be clean and make it in a proper way that we need. Okay, so this is the part that we're talking about the, the strategies and key actions. The key actions that I believe that we should take in Africa now to make our energy, to make the solar energy be in the manner that can, can we, we can all of African can use. Those are the those are the strategies and key actions that we should take as per my own research. Just promoting a strong policy and investment climate, diversification of the energy supply, mix and promoting system efficiencies, strengthening legal regulatory and institutional capacity, investing in human resource development, regional and subregional integration and interconnection, development of the hydropower resource in the regional context, establishing a strategy framework to refineries and oper operationalizing. Capturing the flare gas and, uh, and delivering to the regional and international markets, establishing an African electrification fund. Ensure a coordination among, se among sectors and sectors for a smooth implementation of the clean energy corridors. Ensure continuing strong commitment at country level as well as the ownership of the clean, co clean energy corridors. Embedded clean energy corridors in international renewable energy and climate change agendas, as well as the process of the creation of a sustainable and low carbon power market. Given the fact that the clean energy corridor is built on deep PDA, ensure that all the projects of regional importance coming out are considered to be part of the revised version of the PDA. And the key strategies and actions that we need to take uh, as, for, as for my own research, what I have noticed is just like we need to, this is the key was that we need to take from Africa part to make this clean energy be proper. And all of us can have access to it. We need to have integration, we need to have interconnection, diversification and investment. And the transition part, we have a transition to low carbon economy, enhancing energy access to to button million and promoting energy for productive users. Transformation to green energy, to green economy. And also in the part of deals, we need to have a green new deal for the Africa green economy energy. Thank you, Vera. Thank you, Mr. Castillo. Thank you for a great presentation. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm available for any question that need. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, I guess that's all for the presentations. And let's now move on to the Q&A session. Mr. Pasker, can you turn on your camera, please? Okay, great. Uh, and Mr. Castillo, can you um, remove your sharing, please, your PowerPoint? Mm -hmm. Mr. Castillo? Wait, hold on. Uh, okay, now um, uh, let's start with the questions, okay? Yeah, okay, good. Um, the first question is for Mr. Pasker. Mr. Pasker, uh, we've learned that the African market development is high on the JA Solar's agenda. Could you please explain the reason behind this? 
Sure, absolutely. Um, so obviously Africa is still considered an emerging market, even though you know multiple large-scale projects have been you know, developed. Um, this is all due to the fact that it still contributes to a very small um, you know, capacity of global shipments to, to Africa. Like I said, only 6% in reality. So, you know, Africa as a continent is one of the highest solar um, irradiation yields in the world. Um, so it, it, it purely makes sense to, to, to look at solar PV in, in the context of, of, of the African continent. Um, that tied in with the with a huge demand capability. Um, it, it it makes sense for you know any tier one manufacturer or any tier one company to essentially you know invest heavily in the African continent. I mean, we believe that African continent will be one of the the largest you know markets in the world in the coming future, purely because of the radiation, um, you know, the demand for solar and and the the willingness to install. Um, there seems to be a lot of, you know, energy security problems and 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 power demand issues in Africa that that solar essentially could solve. So that's obviously one of the main reasons we we are quite invested in the African continent. Yeah. Uh, so when J Solar um, expands its business in Africa, what are the most common problems that you have encountered? Can you elaborate a little bit on that? Sure. Um, there, there's a few a few common problems that that we have experienced over the past few years. Obviously, 2021 we've seen a lot of issues with regards to you know um, massive price increases due to raw material shortages and raw material supply. So that's been one of the the main factors that we've you know experienced problems on this year. Um, you know, shipping is also quite a a concern at the moment. Um, you know, long lead times are, are becoming a problem. Um, that's why JS Solar does partner with a, a lot of the reputable um, distributors to essentially, you know, cut out long lead times to have stock holding locally. Um, and then also, you know, vetting process on, on um, you know, potential customers. We essentially don't sell to anyone. We, we do have to have a vetting process in place because we have seen issues with, you know, installers' uh, capabilities in the past. Um, as I've discussed with the larger modules, it is quite a uh, difficulty to install. Um, but you know, obviously, once the client knows what they're doing, it becomes a much easier process to follow. Um, so that's that's something we're we're working on at the moment. Um, so I'll definitely say, obviously, the the massive price increases, the shipping, and and vetting installers are the main three problems we've experienced so far. Okay, thank you very much. Now the third. The third question is for mm -hmm. Mr. Castile. Yeah, tell me Vera. Mm -hmm. uh, just now you have introduced lots of great policies on re renewable energy transition. So which countries in Africa have issued such policies? Can you tell us something more? Well, so far as per my own research and what I have um, learned about the, the solar energy in Africa, I definitely didn't find any country that have a policy, some policy for solar energy in Africa for us for now. I don't know if in the future that we may have, but what I can say is just that uh, um, for now, uh, I think like the African governments are working on it, they're still working on it and they haven't any some policy to, uh, to address about this issue. So um, I believe that uh, the solar energy is one of the biggest results that African countries we are having. So we need to make use of it. And as soon as we don't have a, a strong policy for it, then uh, I can say that uh, we are still a little bit weak regarding to this, uh, this, um, this resource. So um, I, I think and I believe that they are working on it. Still, I can tell exactly which country I don't have because my research, I did not get any research on which country is having a strong policy for, for for the solar energy, and I'm encouraging all the African governments and uh, all African business uh, leaders that they can uh, make use of it for us to at least uh, have a strong policy for the African energy in Africa. Okay, so how do you su suggest solar developers um, or solar manufacturers interact with African governments to get support and investment? Well, governments, they're always there. Governments always need, for example, they need to take actions. And for them to take action, as I just said, I mentioned, as I mentioned earlier on, oh, we need to bring, we need to bring the, how do I call it? We need to sit each other and then uh, bring the ideas, right? 
because government is there, he's waiting for you to bring the idea. And also they can collaborate, they can cooperate as well to bring the ideas. But what, 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 they, what they need to do more is just find out exactly which one is the areas that you're filling and then put and create this uh, strong policy in order to, to make it happen. Okay. Yeah. Um, we have another question from the audience for Mr. Pascal from JSOR. Uh, so the question is, how JA Solar is solving the problem of defected and broken PV modules in Africa? Sure. Um, so we, we do have quite high quality, you know, control standards with our factories. Um, you know, most of the modules, all of the modules are, are flash tested and, and um, inspected before shipping. But I mean, in the reality, there, there is the, the chance that, you know, defective modules will enter the market somehow. Um, we really tried to mitigate that risk by having, you know, stock holding um, within most countries. Um, so, you know, the warranty process is, is quite a straightforward one in terms of swapping out defective modules if it's deemed that it's a factory default, obviously, and not a installation, you know, um, damage from installation, for example. Um, so it, it is quite a straightforward process and it is quite easy to, to get modules swapped out. Um, so, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pascal. And thank you, Mr. Castillo. That's pretty much what we have for today. Okay, thank you again for the speakers and the audience for taking part in this event. Uh, our next technical webinar will be on perovskite solar cell technology on December 21st. I will look forward to seeing you guys again next week. Hope you can all stay safe and healthy during the pandemic. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.